Hi, this is Tony from South Arctica. Stay tuned and keep checking out every day. Hello, Tony. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you, Bruce? Good. How are you, my friend? I'm Bruce. That's my partner, Dark. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You've been doing press all day? Pretty much. Yeah. I had a few breaks here and there, but you know, <laughs> taking care of the kids. <laughs> oh, Tired yeah. of talking, probably. Not yet. Ask me again in two hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't keep it too yeah. long. I told you. I told Liz we'd keep it to around 20, 25 minutes. So that's anyway, cool. All right. So uh, th again, thanks for joining us. New record is uh, just about out. Now that it's complete, how do you feel about it? And are you satisfied with the outcome, especially after, you know, such a long delay in records? Mm, yeah. Well, we are very happy with it. From our side, the album was ready already uh, at the end of August. That was the schedule. And it, it came as a huge shock for us that the, uh, you have to wait like at least five months be be between, you know, uh, getting out right. the master and then, then actually having, having the album out because of the vinyl situation. They're like, right. it's, it's, it's a nightmare. And that was a huge shock. Our idea was to have the album out already in October when we went out on the European tour with uh, Stradivarius. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't happen but we were very, very luck lucky to have uh, at least one single out at that point so it helped is a it lot to, and, uh, is it tough to sit on it for that long like knowing it's done and wanting to get it out there and then you're relying on everybody else to to make it happen yeah. Jesus yes you know <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know having now going back to the album and everything was fresh it would have been easy to remember everything in October but now I have to study the lyrics and everything much more. And then, you know, when people are asking me a question, I'm like, hold on, I need to check that out. And <laughs> so right. hopefully this one won't be like that too much. But, you know, I'm, I'm still learning the album myself again. because it, It's a long time to wait half a year almost. Right. You end up having and, to put a teleprompter down there for the lyrics, right? Because it's been so long. <laughs> Pretty much. I know. <laughs> Luckily, we're not, have, we're not playing the whole album live. Maybe like three, four, five songs. To start with, anyways, and, right. and you know, but already last weekend we shot the video for the next single, and I had to obviously, for the sake of lip sync, I had to right. study. Which, which one <laughs> <Right>. was that? <laughs> which song is that? Um, I suppose it's okay to say "Dark Empath." Oh, Dark Empath, number four. Yeah, it's number four from the album, and then that song is continuing the uh, the end of this chapter, Caleb. Oh, don't say a word, saga. So, yeah. Hey, very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah. By the way, have you heard the album yourself? See it? Yeah, I've we heard... got it just the other day, yesterday. Dark. When we get it yesterday? You sent it to me at like no. nine thirty last night. So yeah. um, <laughs> it's, that was so it's nine thirty yeah. in the morning American time right now. So no, I mean, I <laughs> um, I've heard uh, first in line and a monster only you can't see and you know, those yeah, the other singles. Yeah, yeah. When, cool. When's Dark Empath coming out? Um. Around, I think, early February depends on when we get the video finished. It should have been like late this month, but mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see. We'll see. So, <laughs> fair disclosure, I I never had really heard about Sonata Arctica until 2011. Uh, Seventy thousand tons of metal. I kind of just cool. went on the boat, got invited by a friend, that was like, "Holy moly!" I had never even heard of you guys, and now you know I've been a fan <laughs> since. So. Hey, uh, cool. That's have you guys been sure. back on that boat at all? Uh, once, yeah, 18. we were that. That was the first one, right? Yeah, 2011, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many they've had since, but uh, we've been there twice. Yeah. It's, okay. it's fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah, we're yeah. getting ready to go here again in uh, about a week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. oh, I wish. <laughs> Speak it up. Are you on, Tony? Are, are you on this? There's talk of like this surprise one, no, announcements. You're no, not no, on. No, 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 no. We are not. We have in a promotion cycle here right now we have a lot of other things to do and, and and still not touring the tour starts along the same time with uh, the album released in early march from finland and then goes to europe in september after the uh, summer festival season and 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 so forth no other solid plans yet but i'm sure yeah. latin america and hopefully right. north america will be in the cars as well later on 
So, okay. yeah, that was like what I was really wondering about. I, I think you haven't toured the U.S. since it was a 2019 tour with Camelot and Battle Beast. 19, yeah. 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 What's yeah. up with that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't had anything out much after that. Mm-hmm. And then there's right. like this thing, thing what, what did they call it? Corona? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which made things a lot, like very difficult. We were supposed to go on our 25th anniversary tour to Latin mm-hmm. America. Uh, sometime like was it like March 2020? Yeah, and that's now uh, yeah, and three years later, uh, we actually managed to do that tour, and that was the last thing that we crossed from our, you know, mm-hmm. past right. sins kind of thing. And the <laughs> find- last Corona dips. Yeah. <laughs> do you find it difficult? You guys been around so long, um, not writing the same record. Like I know you have to you have your wheelhouse and you have your fans, but you also don't want to write the same previous record, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, like, well, right. <laughs> well, there are bands that are doing it with, with great success, like seemingly writing the same album again and again. And yes, again and again. right. That's what I was trying to say. That is something that is, that is something that is accepted uh, and ex- like expected from them as well. Uh, like ACDC, for example, right. They, yeah. they should not drift far from the mold. Anyhow, I think our mold is somehow stretchy, <laughs> flexible, right. and, and then uh, from the get-go already we have like different styles embedded in our uh, musical identity in a way, so it, it gives us freedom to do a lot of things. But along the years, I think we drifted and broke the mold a little bit here and there, and and and, and uh, uh, we always had few songs that s- somehow fit the o- original song of the Arctic thing, but there in some point we drifted too far intentionally uh, or in, is that just something it, that happens it was it was both intentionally and then like sometimes you get too lost in your own bubble somehow there and then you can't see the trees from the forest <laughs> or the forest yeah. from the trees kind of thing and then and, and and you just don't reflect and bounce your ideas through other people and, and then it happens that you you have too many weird songs on one album, and hence right. the whole album sounds like <laughs> weird. Although although there is this one power metal song there that is supposed to make it better, but it it doesn't happen. So yeah, it we we've, we've got around a lot of different things, and I, I think uh, Clear Called Beyond gives us a chance to do just about anything we want musically. There are some weird oddball thing it is happening here and there and and also the power metal which is like the major the biggest thing right now on this album i don't think we've had so many power metal songs on any album in the past even if you take the earlier some of the arctic albums it has always been a case that uh that there are many songs that are not like if you take them out of the context of a power metal album you wouldn't call it the song power metal per se although it somehow fits sound wise and everything on on the album but it's it's not power metal per se but on this album we have a lot of songs that are that you would put them in the power metal basket if you were shopping so yeah uh, (laughs) you're gonna love it oh yeah (laughs) shopping Uh, i I, I would (laughs) not just speaking for myself but like um bringing up the seventy thousand tons of metal that's a community i'm pretty active in when first in line dropped a whole lot of us were like oh my god yeah because, I mean, a lot of us like love that style. So you're saying that's more typical of the upcoming album? Yeah, and the second track on the album, California, it's it's even faster. What? And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and Dark Empathy is like, if you like, don't say a word. I don't know if that's, yeah. that's like that, like medium tempo song. Yeah. <laughs> but, you like. but anyway, there's, that kind of stuff is, is there plenty. And Cure for Everything is a power metal song. Mm-hmm. fast and angel defiled is very fast and and yeah so far so oh. <laughs> uh, that's the best news of the year so far <laughs> yeah yeah so, so, interesting. so you brought up previously like um you, you have kids now right yeah yeah two so obviously like you were saying there was a musical evolution from the era of ecliptica where there's a lot of double bass and such and even like winter hard skilled and then you know you start becoming a bit more melodic probably a bit more heartfelt um, I don't know when your hmm. kids were born, but do they factor into that? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there was suddenly there was a song like "I Have a Right," mm-hmm. for example, <laughs> around that time. So, <laughs> so yes, okay. of course, it it gives you uh, a certain uh, uh, sense of uh, 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 I don't know responsibility, also 
And uh, you need to think about yourself and your own life much more when you have kids. You can just blah, 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 go around the world and write about whatever. At least that happened to me that I, I want to be more conscious about certain things and, and, and advise myself with many of the songs that this is something that I do not want to be and um, not necessarily preach about how things should be done and how, how they could be, but maybe drawing like uh, paintings and, 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 and writing lyrics that people can somehow reflect to and, and uh, find maybe solutions for their own problems. Mm -hmm. I come up with most of those. I don't have too many problems that I can think of <laughs> myself, <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a always going through the, through uh, like the worst case scenario kind of thing that it should not be. I don't want it to be like this. And uh, I, 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 uh, yeah. so yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's definitely had a, had an impact on my songwriting lyrically, especially not so much music writing but, ways. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, um, so the old style being more about wolves and winter, and now it's like yeah, you know, personal life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's not, but it, it's a part of it, definitely. You know, there's we have always had a lot of love songs and human relation, yeah, of course, uh, stories, and and things always go wrong on those songs. Mostly, there are a few that are more like positive and happy, like love, for example. Mm -hmm. That is like, well, you are with the same person from cradle till to crave kind of thing and then all things are beautiful kind of thing but though i find those exceedingly difficult to write i am not uh, like when it comes to songwriting i mean i'm not your typical reggae guy <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so i find that very very hard and uh, I'd, I'd rather uh, sort of get inspiration from the darker side of things and uh, and, and uh, emotions sadness and uh, try to uh, evoke emotions in people uh, and, and if you manage to make someone cry or think very much about their life that's the best thing that i can think of that is a result of, of any song and uh, every now and again many times a year i get messages from people that uh, they would not be on this planet anymore unless they have heard one of the songs and then and it's it just blows your mind Sure. that your song has such a power and and when you are writing the song you cannot even understand that because the song for you when you write it, it the meaning that you have in mind might be totally different than the one of that of the the uh, person who listens to the song and, and and it might be just one line in the song that sort of turns the twitch the switch mm -hmm. in your head and and it's 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 so do you a feel a sense of responsibility music. then to your fans when you're writing <laughs> well yeah there's the saying that you are responsible of the souls that you save but I, no <laughs> in that sense no i no, no i don't uh, it would be an awful stress to have but i'm just very happy when people tell me these things obviously because it gives me uh, a sense of reason and and, and uh, motivates me to keep and, and gives me the feeling that i'm doing something right when it, uh, yeah, at the same time, you get like a lot of criticism from people that it, your lyrics are not power metal, and uh, <laughs> I just don't give a hoot and doot <laughs> at all. Anything I don't care. <laughs> so <laughs> why would I? When at the same time you get like really positive things from the other side. Does yeah. power metal even have a definitive lyrical style? Like musically, yeah, it's got like you know the lead guitar and the double bass drumming, but like everything from like rhapsody style, like you know swords and sorcery to wolves in your case, or I don't even know yeah. what Camelot sings about most of the time. But like, do you, do you get shit for lyrics? Uh, yeah, I, I do. You know, even from, especially from the get go, having mm -hmm. songs like Ta La La, yeah. blah blah, blah not but it's not cannot. So they, they, those are not metal lyrics, and, and they are probably not, and most mostly are not. This is something that I had to study a little bit, that that I can even bring some some metal thing and something that can be accepted by the metal heads into <laughs> our music. <laughs> because naturally, I'm writing about something totally different, and uh, just mm -hmm. whatever pops into my, my mind and or something that touches me, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever I write, if it doesn't, uh, you know spark any emotions in me then I, I don't think it, it's worth writing i don't usually write about any 
bippity boppity whatever <laughs> shit. You know, it's, it's, it, it has to have some some weird meaning to me at least. You know, at least one line in the song has to have a solid meaning so that it oh. makes makes it worth for me. And then then you can write a lot of uh, supporting lines around that one uh, sort of key line that you have in the song. It, that's an interesting style. <laughs> For that matter, like, isn't Talua yeah. like uh, Talua? I think that's your most streamed song on Spotify. Who's complaining about it? <laughs> yeah, I think that there are some weirdest shit going around with that song. You know, at least in Finland, there is this challenge. Did you do the blank? You know, the blanking. The when you do blanking, like. Oh, ups, but oh. you say oh, yeah. planking, yeah. Plank. planking. Yeah. So it's a talula plank. So you count how many times you can listen to the song while planking. So <laughs> like, some people have managed to go from <laughs> they originally they only got through the first verse and they, <laughs> they were done. That's now funny. they can do 11, <laughs> 11 talulas. So it's a <laughs> it's funny. A, it's a, wow. Yeah. Interesting there. Yeah. What does a Sonata Arctica audience look like or crowd look like these days right i imagine it's super multi-generational because you've been around so long right yeah it's it's um uh, anything from old geezer in their 70s or 80s at least the ones that look like have gray hair <laughs> right. should, yeah, exactly yeah that looks good <laughs> and to to babies and and the best thing is that when you have like three generations of people of the same family watching a show then I, I can actually rem remember these people. That the first there is this now grandpa that I've met in a show, and then and then he has brought his own son to see the show. Show and now there's a grandson and some son as well seeing the show, and it's like That's oh my crazy. god, this is this is this is the way. This yeah. is the way. It's it's, 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 it's yeah. really crazy. It, uh, yeah. All right, so. That, that's crazy to me. I, I would never have thought, like, you know, a band like ACDC or Kiss or something, like, you know, having grandparents and grandkids. But Power Metal really only came about in, like, the 90s. I guess 80s, we count Halloween. So 30 years and you're, like, mm. three generations? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. that's crazy. I hope there's not a teenage pregnancy in there, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Obviously, the kids were a bit older at the time, yeah. like... Yeah, in there, you know, we've been around anyways. So uh, the people who were fifteen when we started, they can easily be right. be like, you know, parents yeah. at this point. Yeah, that'd be like. I love how that happens. How metal gets transferred down through the generation because I've done it with my kids as well, and I don't think you see that yeah. in many other genres of music. <laughs> yeah, well, I would not know honestly, but but still, <laughs> it is something that I, something I, I I get to see there, and it, it's a fantastic thing, and. And we have luckily we have like healthy amount of ladies in the front row always still. Right. And so we are we do not get these leather studded leather kind of guys too much. That's right. that's something that right. we are lacking. Whether or not that's a good thing, but I, I, I like my uh, father in law always said, or actually his friends told him when he only had daughters that uh, you know uh, girls bring boys. <laughs> so when you yeah, have girls true. in the audience, they will be boys as well. So yeah, yep. Yeah, that's one hundred percent true. Dark, yeah. you got anything else? I'm, I'm just thinking, like the first time I ever saw Sonata, I was 17 years old. It was uh, the Days of Grace tour, New York. Um, yeah, that was a pretty mixed audience. I remember my friends and I walked out, and we were like, "Wait, we, like we saw Hammerfall two weeks before that, and they didn't have many chicks <laughs> in the audience." Well, what is it like? How do you get the chick appeal? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the songs and the lyrical content, emotional things and ballads and, and such that we play and of course we are absolutely beautiful <laughs> <laughs> distinguished at this age right yeah <laughs> oh sure yeah. yeah 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 absolutely that is all i've got if dark if you don't have anything else i appreciate you taking the time tony my pleasure bruce do you want to get a bumper or yeah yeah